Good afternoon, this is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. I'm going to continue in 1 John chapter 2. We're starting, and I think I'm only going to read verse 27. And let's not forget that we are going through the Bible commentary series by J. Vernon McGee. All right. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. Anointing is the Greek word charisma. We speak of a certain speaker or preacher as having charisma. If he doesn't have charisma, he doesn't get very far today. You'll have to admit that. When I went to my classical dictionary, I must say I was shocked and disappointed. This word means to smear on. It means to take in an ointment and smear it on. It's like when you take a medicated petroleum and put it on your chest at night. You are anointing yourself. You are smearing it on. That is literally what charisma means. I checked with Dr. R.C. Trench and Dr. Marvin Vincent, two outstanding Greek scholars, scholars, and they also come up with the same meaning. Charisma means to smear on. But what does this mean for us believers today? Back in the Old Testament, by the command of God, the Israelite priests were anointed with oil. That anointing indicated in a physical way that they were specially endued by the Holy Spirit to perform a certain function. That is what the anointing here means for us today. But the anointing which ye have received of him, that is, you and I have received an anointing of God. When you are saved, one of the things which the Spirit of God does for you is that He anoints you. He anoints you to understand divine truth, which you could not understand before. But the anointing which ye have received of Him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. The important thing to note here is that John is not saying that we do not need teachers. We do need teachers, or else Paul was certainly wrong in Ephesians when he made the statement that God has given to the church certain men who are gifted, some who are teachers, some who are evangelists, and some who are shepherds to minister to and counsel folk. Paul said that God has given these men to the church to build up the body of believers. I think it is important that we all sit under good teachers. As I think back over my life, I thank God for the godly men who have crossed my path. They are the ones who are responsible for my being in the ministry. I have the pictures of four men hanging on the wall of my office at the headquarters of our radio ministry. The combined influence of these four men is the reason that I entered the ministry. These men affected my life. You may not know these men, but I'm going to give you their names. The first man is a man by the name of Joy Boyd, who was a layman in Nashville, Tennessee. When no one else seemed interested in a young fellow who wanted to study for the ministry, Joy Boyd got interested. He is actually the man who did the footwork of making it possible for me to get a job so that I could go to college and for me to get a loan so that I could go to college and seminary. He followed my ministry and I was his pastor for three years. He was a wonderful man and I thank God for him. Next to his picture is the picture of the pastor whom I followed in that church in Nashville, Dr. A.S. Allen. He is one of those unsung preachers whom you have never heard about today, but he is one of the greatest preachers I have ever listened to. Next to his picture is that of Dr. Lewis Sperry Chaffer, the founder and first president of Dallas Theological Seminary. My, when I heard him preach, that was, that's what turned me on. I thought, this is the thing that I want to do. Next to Dr. Chaffer is the picture of probably the brainiest man that I have ever met, Dr. Albert Dudley. He is a man who had great influence upon the turn which I took in the ministry. 
to become an expository preacher rather than a preacherette giving little sermonettes to little Christianettes. I thank God for him and for all these men. Therefore, John is not saying that teachers are not essential, but he is saying something that is important for God's children today. But the anointing which ye have received of him. This has been referred to before when he spoke of the unction of the Holy One, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. One of the Holy Spirit's ministry is to teach us. He is able to guide us into all truth. The Lord Jesus, the great teacher, said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. John fourteen twenty six. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things, that is, all that you and I are able to contain. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. There has been given to you an anointing, whereby ye are able, you are enabled, yeah, to understand all truth, because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14 Paul also wrote earlier, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 9 through 10. This is the anointing of the Holy Spirit for a believer. This is one reason we encourage folk to get into the Word of God and to study it. I received a letter from a dear lady who makes a tape recording of our radio program and then listens to it again and again. She also reads repeatedly this passage of scripture being taught. All of a sudden her eyes are open and she sees the Lord Jesus in a new way. What has happened? She has had an anointing. I don't believe in a lot of the silly stuff that is going on today, which is purely emotional and which doesn't enlighten you to understand the love of the word of God and to love the Lord Jesus. It doesn't matter how much whoopee you put into your religion. You can just whoop it up and have all kinds of emotion, but all of that is of no value. It is an enlightenment that we need today. The whole point is that there ought to come a day when you and I can stand on our two feet as far as the word of God is concerned. And as Peter says, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. First Peter 3.15 we ought to be able to do that, but there is also a grave danger in this which I want to very carefully point out. I know people who have been going to Bible classes and have been studying the Bible for years, but they never get anywhere. They are the ones who bring Bible teaching into disrepute. I see people at Bible conferences in the summertime. I've seen them ev there every summer for 30 years, and they are today right where they were 30 years ago. They are like silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 6-7 They don't seem quite to arrive, to arrive <clears throat> but they always have their Bibles and are always writing a, little, a few little notes down. At summer conferences where I'm speaking some time ago, where I was speaking some time ago, a woman came to me with the same question that I am confident she had asked me 25 years ago at another summer conference. She asked, a, she had a notebook and she was still taking it down, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, we ought to get to the place where the Spirit of God is our teacher. As you study the Word of God, do you ask the Spirit of God to teach you and to lead you? If you don't understand something the first time, get down on your knees and say, 
Lord, I miss the point. I don't understand this. Make it real to me. I want this to be real to me. This is important, and this is what John is saying here. The anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. There are certain things which the Spirit of God can make very real to you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, the Lord Jesus said, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Matthew twenty four twenty four. But it will not be possible to deceive the elect. The Antichrist will not deceive the elect who are left on earth when he comes. And today, no Antichrist will deceive them. I knew a couple who had recently been saved, and they got into a liberal church. I met them when I was a pastor in downtown Los Angeles. They told me we worked our way down Wilshire Boulevard, going from church to church until we got to your church. We knew we were not hearing the truth of God at the churches we visited, but we couldn't put our finger on it. We knew the teaching was wrong, and we didn't know how it was wrong. They were just new converts. God's little children are going to follow the pattern the Lord Jesus spoke of when he said, My sheep hear my voice. John ten twenty seven, God's children are not going to follow a false shepherd. They hear his voice, and the Spirit of God can be their teacher. This should be a great comfort to us. We need to test every teacher we hear. It would be well if you tested me. Ask the Holy Spirit, Is this that McGee is teaching the truth of God? Make it real to my heart, too. I want to know for myself whether it is true or not. Amen. And I am going to end it there. That's a great place to actually end it. And he has just reiterated things that I have told you guys all along. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Read it for yourself. Ask God. Because you know what? We, men and women who speak on the word of God, teach on the word of God, preach the word of God, are fallible. We're not infallible. And since we're fallible, we make mistakes. We could misread something. We could misinterpret something. You never know. We could be a deceiver deep down and you have no idea. You need to take everything, everything to the Lord in prayer. I have learned throughout my years, and I'm 53 years old, question everything. I do. I cannot help it. I accept what the Word of God says. And if somebody is saying something that does not sit well with me, I will not accept it before I take it to the Father. Because sometimes we could have a problem with the person and just not accept anything they say. I have no idea. So you got to make sure that you go to the Father and ask him, please show me. Open my understanding. Give me wisdom. For his word says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And he will give it to him freely and upbraid if not. And he will, but make sure you ask in faith, believing he's going to do it. But you know, you got to remember also that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Do you truly fear the Lord? Are you serving the Lord with fear and trembling? I don't know your heart. You don't know my heart, but I know one who knows all of our hearts, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only begotten Son of God. And he came and died upon that cross for you and I. And three days later, he rose again to life everlasting and is now seated on the right hand of the Father. And soon he will return. He will return, and he will not be a meek and mild 
little lamb. He will not be a little baby in the manger, but he is coming with feet as fine brass as if it had went through a fiery furnace, and his eyes will be as fire, and there will be a sword coming out of his mouth. He's coming to judge this world. He's coming as king of kings and lord of lords. You need to get ready, and you need to make sure that your heart is right with the Lord. The only way it can become right is through repentance and getting upon your knees knees and asking for forgiveness for the sins that you have committed against him and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ calling upon his name for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved it is by grace through faith that you can be saved no works whatsoever lest any man should boast but it is a gift from God remember that always I want you to make sure that you keep your eyes on Jesus keep your nose in the book and embed the word of God upon the tablets of your heart until next time I want you all to know that I love you with all of my heart and have a blessed evening